Okay. So today I will talk about our experience to put Cubes Impact running on Aurora, which is exascale machine. The major difference it is, we all know, it has a different architecture that is from a different render of uh, providing GPUs and the software stack is quite different. So just quick acknowledgement. So when most of the work was done under the support of exascale computing project, Although the project has sunset, but thanks for the funding for over the past seven years, we were able to bring QMC Pack to a next level, uh, to a new level that's supporting all the uh, GPUs, all the excess game machines in this country. And I would, uh, particularly for the Aurora work, I'd like to thank Yonim King from Intel for many helps for developing and tr troubleshooting Intel software. So the basic talk, I will quickly go through what QMC Pack does and then emphasize a big topic that why we need to do and how we need to do the performance portability. And I will showcase a bit later the Intel GPU performance. And also uh, at the end the section portion, I will talk about a lot of GPU porting uh, tips for as QMC Pack mainly use OpenMP offload plus uh, vendor or as aspects of using both and how to combine them together. So my background is doing electronic structure method. Basically, we want to solve a atomistic simulation using a first principle method. But the method there's no perfect method, basically. You can go extremely accurate, but very expensive. You can see in this spectrum on the left side, so it's more accurate, but the uh, system size, the number of atoms, the number of electrons is very limited because due to the scaling of the methodology. Uh, we also have a few other methods which are cheaper, but we may replace certain of initial calculation with certain parameterized uh, database just to accelerate the calculation. So it's not fully of initial, but it's helpful to do a larger scale simulations. For example, a lot of problems, for example, if we want to study a uh, amorphous system, which is gigantic, you can't do every piece with the ab initial. And that's why you have to use a force field to do, do something. That is basically, uh, overall, it's think about doing a surrogate and it's very similar to all the ideas behind nowadays, very popular AI thing. But at the end, provide those accurate calculation is still very important. Nowadays, we are very familiar with, uh, at least most widely used is use density functional theory calculations, uh, but sometimes we do need more accuracy and to answer specific um, questions in the physics, like why there's superconductivity, why the magnetism happens this way, how the uh, like uh, interact with phonons, uh, photon, photons, all those dynamic related properties. So uh, somehow we need to chase answer certain puzzles in DFT and we go for quantum Monte Carlo simulation that I, I put as QMC. So we already did a lot of work during the petascale era doing QMC simulations. I did a, uh, quite a few simulations already. That is uh, gigantic because it requires a, a large fraction of those petascale machines to actually do the simulation and burn a lot of hours. Uh, but it works the, the cost because you get a better answer when the lower, lower less accurate method suffers. So what's next? Uh, about seven years ago, we were thinking about what should we do as we have a more powerful machine going to come on the floor. floor. So the one thing is we probably want to solve the existing problems faster to leverage the more, uh, more powerful accelerators. The other, the second direction is to simulate larger, even larger problems because uh, we have 
more larger molecules because to achieve a very certain functionality, uh, most materials like uh, tweaking a bit of existing structure, adding uh, dopants, that kind of changes to the system that requires simulation with much larger cells. So we want to achieve those two goals. So what we did was through the QMT pack, uh, simulation package. It is, uh, it, it cover, it, it implements the quantum Monte Carlo methods. It has the uh, real space quantum Monte Carlo methods plus uh, like the second quantization space the orbital space uh, fundamental color methods. Um, my focus is on the real space part and it can be applied on molecules to these systems or solids as of interest. So technically the code is written in C++ mostly and uh, for parallelization, it has the um, it use MPI to go uh, scale up to the whole machine use OpenMP threading to leverage the multi-core CPU architecture. And when accelerators are available, we use nowadays actually OpenMP target, uh, CUDA, K plus SQL, those vendor uh, programming languages to program kernels to target the GPU. So just quick cap, think about we have a, uh, we, we, the method is called quantum Monte Carlo. So I won't go to details into like formulas, but think about Monte Carlo. You could imagine we are doing random walking. We have many, many uh, Markov chains doing random walking at, um, in parallel. So that brings us one very convenient level of concurrency we can use for parallelization. Yeah, I consider it, it is a course level uh, parallelization. Second is quantum. So since we are doing quantum, we deal with orbitals, we deal with um, many body interactions. Although that to make calculation affordable, we usually just do one body, two body, three body interactions. But these are many body interactions. So you have to calculate a lot of potentials and these are kind of, you can parallelize. Think about your moving electrons, you have to solve the, all the pairs, right? So there's a second level of concurrency. You can do threading, you can do CMD, and you can do GPU acceleration, those things. Uh, so basically methodology brings us two level of concurrency. The, the, the overall voting is to put these two level of concurrency onto the actual hardware. So, it's uh, the method itself is still heavily based on linear algebra. So we use blast Lapex libraries and uh, a bit of very light FFT and a bit of uh, HDF5 to deal with the IO. So that's, uh, the, these are very common HPC packages, I would say. So just give you an idea of how the simulation actually goes. So for diffusion Monte Carlo, think about you have those individual walkers or replicas. Uh, each of them have, for example, your simulation have 10 electrons. You have 10 electrons in the box, in a, in a solid, in, in a structure. So you random, so these are the whole, the whole uh, all the replicas, all the walkers, we call it a population. Now, each walker needs to evolve as we are doing random walking. So you propose move of electrons and then you calculate all the properties. And once the properties are calculated, you need to make a decision that whether this uh, worker gain weights or lose weights, it becomes less important or more important. So by after doing that, you do load balance, reshuffle all the populations to make sure they equally distributed across all the and behind no. So the simulation basically goes this way. And you can imagine that when you are working on individual workers, they are fully independent. There is, you do need synchronization at certain point, but it's quite loosely, uh, it is quite parallelizable. Uh, so the scaling is never a concern for QMT pack. The problem has been demonstrated not 
a, an issue on both a regular GPU-based machine or GPU-accelerated machine. So, uh, and as we today, we all know that because of uh, due to the complexity of expanding node counts, uh, the, the actually the number of node counts is dropping or stay more or less the same nowadays. Although the interconnect speed goes up, but the number of endpoints doesn't really increase. So scalability is clearly not a concern and we haven't found any surprises. So now I talk about how we do uh, the performance, redesign the code for performance portability. So actually, uh, the key point I would say is, so the word performance and portability, it's kind of a challenge because we want both. We don't want to bias a portability, giving up performance, or we don't want just chasing performance and bring developers nightmare. So let's first talk about why we want both, uh, especially portability. So as I said, we don't want nightmare for developers that we actually had nightmares. So when we started, when QMC pack was initially developed, it's a CPU only code. So it has a, a very vanilla CPU driver. We call it, think about driver, just a, a calculation, uh, simulation method like your QMC, uh, VMs, very Schumann cloud, or the Carlo and CPU Schumann cloud. So we call it driver. Uh, the initial classic CPU driver is designed for multi-core. So think about you have all the workers, you distribute all the workers across MPI. As I mentioned, you, this won't be discussed. But within a node, uh, you, you just parallelize worker over all the threads. But to gain efficiency, we have a high level uh, parallelization, open P threading. So the worker loop is at the second. However, the outer loop for the Monte Carlo generations and inner loop for the particle moves, these are all sequential loops. So there's only one level of parallelism and on the workers. So then around 2010, we start to have the GPUs. That's why we have the initial, we, have, uh, we started the initial uh, CUDA driver and that now we consider it's legacy and we actually have already deleted it. The behavior is, is it, uh, it has is, it actually has the worker loop in the most because when the workers actually batch together and the calculation becomes deficient on GPUs. For small calculations, you can't just have one worker at a time sending uh, jobs, sending calculations to the GPU. We will, the performance will be very poor due to the overhead talking to the GPU. That's why the worker loop was moved in the most. Due to this parallelization scheme change, there's API change. So the divergence happens at the top of the code. So basically you can imagine uh, you, at the beginning of the code, you choose CPU or GPU and all the rest code path doesn't share at all. So that is clearly a maintenance hell. Uh, how are we gonna solve it? So on the left side, we have two sets of driver behaves completely different, but our goal is on the right side, we want to combine them together to have the number of workers have a large spectrum, a number of electrons, and there's no selection issue at the top level. That's why we, uh, reorganize the code a bit. Instead of three loops, we actually have four kind of four loops, although the innermost loop is a fetch. So uh, with two sequential loop unchanged, we parallelize instead of workers, we organize the population into crowds and we just do threads over the uh, threading over the crowd. And each crowd internally is batched for all the calculations. So at, uh, not until you hit the batch uh, layer, everything is agnostic. It doesn't need to know CPU or GPU and it runs on the CPU threading machine or GPU hybrid machine. It doesn't need to know actually what is the computing device. 
So by doing this, uh, it, this, this reorganization, redesign, can fall back to the old behavior, CP behavior or GPU behavior, uh, by just turning off uh, one or two levels. So it's very convenient. So uh, then what for the particular day today for GPU porting, we need to do is solve the batch side. So the batched APIs inside, we need to implement batch calculation to CPU or to GPU actually, both. So CPU is basically, we do a bit of vectorization for GPU. Uh, we attempt to port as much as possible using OpenMP. So OpenMP, as I mentioned in the beginning, in QMC pack now mandates OpenMP threading and also uh, OpenMP offload becomes a, a majority of the GPU coding code. So threading cover the handling of all the crowds at the top level and brings a lot of, uh, uh, how to say, opportunities to maximize the dual utilization of the actual computing device. You have multiple crowds talk to the same GPU. They were time sharing the GPU, making sure the GPU compute side doesn't have actually ga uh, gaps. Then inside uh, each batch API, we try to put as much features as, as possible with OpenMP target, OpenMP offload. Uh, we found this actually works pretty well on NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel GPUs. Uh, we have a wide selection of compilers. We, for NVIDIA, we can do GNU clan. For AMD, we can do clan AOMP. NVIDIA with MVHPC, I'm not very confident for it for OpenMP implementation. Intel, we can do one API, hopefully Intel upstream more stuff and we can just use upstream plan. On the other side, uh, as I mentioned, the code use linear algebra. We actually need blast and lay path. So that part of code to call the library, we tend to uh, use just the vendor provided API with their a bit of runtime engagement. So we need still need a bit of SQL CUDA hip code to talk to those library or write small kernels just to bring a gap between, uh, between those library calls if we do certain operations. So, but overall this strategy, the need of the vendor programming model side is quite light, I would say. So, how does a computation go within a crowd with those batched APIs? So basically within a stack, you need to, this is all very simplified. So you basically move particles around. And when you move particles, you update, uh, you update it, its coordinates. Uh, of course, since the, the coordinates are consumed on the GPU, you need to send it to the GPU. Then you do computation of all the distance between the electrons ions later it will be used for calculating like pair potentials so this part is both parts are done using OpenMP we try to maximize the utilization of OpenMP so once particles is set up we update wave functions which uh, contains updating the determinant uh, and also the just True. Structure itself is quite straightforward. You just do a bit of open the kernels and it works on the GPU. Determinant part is heavy on linear algebra. So it actually first need to compute all the orbitals using OpenMP and have the results consumed by the matrix operations in the, uh, in the determinant matrix. So clearly you see that we have different piece is uh, using GPUs, different features using GPUs in a single iteration. And we have two programming models and they actually need to talk to each other. So we also encounter issues in initially and we resolved how to sharing uh, pointers, basically memory location between two different compute, uh, two different programming models and how we handle the synchronization between them. So it's very interesting when the intention of the, to use both programming models. And we find it actually works beautifully with NVIDIA and Intel and slightly issue with AMD. 
So, okay, let, let me go back to a bit of the performance that to help you understand how things go. So as I said, we redesigned the code with batches, um, uh, with crowds actually. With the crowds, uh, we actually, with a new code, mostly rewritten, we were able to achieve a better performance compared to using the legacy CUDA code, the, the already deleted legacy CUDA code. So on Summit, this, is, this was the demonstration from Summit. We have seven cores per, uh, we divide the node by the number of GPUs. That, that means you have seven cores per, per CPU, per, per MPI task. Um, per GPU. So we just establish seven crowds and having them concurrently submitting calculation to uh, to the GPU. GPU have this pattern that when okay, I actually saw the chat question. Uh, let me see. So, uh, so the question was, uh, how is the concept of crowd different from data parallelism? So, uh, data parallelism and task parallelism, I would consider crowd is more of a task parallelism because these crowds doesn't need to, so between crowds, it's, it's like task parallelism. Each crowd will operate on its own uh, uh, threads and they don't share data between each other. Until the very end of the calculation, we need to do load balance. We try to, we do statistics of load balance. We try to reduct, do reduction on the data across all the crowds. But uh, most of the time, uh, each crowd freely on its own stream. Although they share the GPU, but they are time sharing the GPU, not, uh, how do you say? Yeah, it's mostly time sharing. And as long as GPU is available to do something, GPU could take the kernels and launch, uh, run it. Within a crowd is actually the old fashioned data parallelism, parallelism I would say. Uh, you, you always operate the, for example, if you have a hundred workers per crowd, you operate a hundred workers uh, by log, in lockstep fashion. So it is all the kernels that data parallelism. That's why the, the batched operation within a crowd is very suitable for GPU porting, GPU calculation. There's no divergence. It's very efficient on GPU. Mm, let me go back to this uh, picture. So, you, when you have one crowd, you're just using one core, and you, yes, you, you have very big GPU kernels. GPU size is very heavy. But when you get larger and larger size of the crowd, each crowd, uh, the worker count goes up. That means the preparation work or post processing work on the CPU gets heavier. And when you have data transfers, if you since you only have a single crowd, uh, everything is done in sequence, and you don't gain overlap like data transfer and computing. So you start to lose when you really hit the throughput uh, limit. So uh, with by using seven crowds, you gain those efficiency by distributing the whole side work across all the threads and also uh, have the overlap of data transfer between data transfer and uh, computation. So that's why when you really stress the computation to the up, uh, large large worker count limit, the throughput goes very high, uh, much higher with the crowd. Uh, ah. Yes, so CUDA based the GPU driver is the legacy driver. It only has, so it, it, as I showed in the very beginning, it only has one crowd. Basically you can think of it has only one crowd and there's all, mostly one threading doing the work. So at 
At lower worker count, it's efficient because it doesn't exercise much GPU overhead. But at high worker count, the single core becomes the this, this contention point. It takes additional time. Yeah, the batch driver leverage multiple threading, distribute work, and maximize use of the CPU. And uh, GPU actually also multiple, as I said, multiple uh, thread because uh, OpenMP and, and um, CUDA SQL, they operate on the, the kernels from multiple thread uh, sits on different streams and they are able to over, overlap data transfer and computation. That's why you gain additional uh, performance. Does that make sense? Well, we because we uh, the, there's a question: Have I tried applying the crowd method to CUDA? So the answer is uh, technically yes, because the batch to driver, as I said, the upper level design, the threading design, multi crowd design applies to all the vendors. It doesn't is it's agnostic. It doesn't know I'm using CUDA, HIF, SQL, or even CPU. So this feature is enabled universally. Uh, if you were asking, are we trying to apply this crown method of the, to the legacy CUDA driver? No, we didn't because we decided to abandon it. There's no need to do it anymore. So with the updated batch driver, it supports all the vendors with the, uh, yeah, by just this new design. Okay, let me continue. Yeah, so I'm holding, well, okay, first we need to understand this figure. So this is performance relative uh, to the Polaris CPU baseline. And we have the batch driver ported for CUDA and uh, HIP because there's a little change, but the Aurora one we did only partially. I'm still working on the rest. Uh, these are the, the, the X axis is the number of atoms. So let's just focus on to the rightmost uh, problem size, the large challenge of problem size. I'm trying to uh, for, push on Aurora. So with this new design, we've run the largest prob problem size measured through single node throughput. Uh, in this single node throughput measurement, Intel actually does a pretty decent, show pretty decent performance. So the baseline is Polaris with four GPU. With Intel, the, if you look at the specification, the single precision uh, flops and double precision flops are both higher than A100, much higher. And plus we have, uh, how many, six, PVC GPUs per node. So it's expected to higher, uh, much higher than the, the NVIDIA. If you just do exact paper pencil ratio, Intel should be further higher, but think about not everything's on the GPU. So we don't exactly get the, the full paper pencil ratio speed up, but I'm pretty satisfied. Instead, uh, we struggle with uh, AMD performance and even the same situation and my 250X has much higher single double precision flops compared to A100 due to certain software issues in the AMD software stack, we are not able to. So I'm quite happy with the Intel first generation hardware and software achieving this level of performance. So, I'm still working on this, how the, the code class is needed for the smaller problem size, but all the parallelization patterns, multi-thread, threaded OpenP offload, multi-threaded uh, SQL kernel launch uh, has already been exercised at this 512 atom problem size. So weak scaling, strong scaling, as I mentioned, uh, yeah, it's never a QMC pack concern because it's relatively easy for us to achieve a good scaling. There's a bit of uh, fluctuation. You may see a bit super scaling, but 
right now we were still a stable kind of to have better idea of how the reproducibility happens on the on the machine so there's a bit of subliteration but it's still within the range i'd say uh yeah, so for weak and strong scaling, basically just perfect scaling up. So right now with Aurora or Sunspot, we are doing stress tests. I noticed that uh, when I was doing those performance benchmark, I tend to run things in a short manner, like five minutes and just a few iterations. Uh, but to fully consolidate the software for Aurora, we would like to run much longer simulation and run with way more node counts. So we are putting this stress problem uh, roughly takes one hour. It's a weak scaling design, so you can just run one hour uh, on every machine, uh, on, on, on any number of uh, node counts, but the time will be fixed roughly. So we try to scale up on Sunspot so doing one to 64 is easy. On Aurora, in the uh, beginning of this year, we were trying to reach 2,000 nodes. Uh, so far, we were successful on 512 nodes. We have a few runs on 512 nodes. And this stress, the stressing test is really important. We identify new issues that never really surfaced well on uh, low node count runs. So Cumulative uh, encountered the one segmentation fault in the level zero runtime, and we were able to work around with uh, uh, just disable this feature. And second is we hit the SQL runtime segmentation fault, and we identified the issues actually from MKL. And we we I actually already received the the fix the version of MKL, but I haven't get a chance to Aurora to run at large scale since Aurora is heavily prepared for the important tasks at this moment, not given to applications to test out. So overall things were working pretty, working pretty well. And now I will go through a bit of GPU or open supporting tips for Aurora. So First is, I mentioned uh, uh, Kim rely on multi-threaded offload. Uh, there, there are um, a lot of benefits doing that. However, we need to get every bit of details right. One thing is we need to use ping memory, accurately use ping memory to enable true asynchronous data transfer. So by doing that, your copy, you, you host the device device to host, function call will return immediately. If you don't ping the memory, those cores will be kind of be blocking there and wait until the copy actually ends or at least the staging part has finished. So that you have basically one thread block the GPU runtime, GPU run runtime block another thread. So you lose all the benefit of doing multi-threading since they share the same GPU. So doing the ping memory is very important. So method one, you can use a, ho a hosting API using vendor provided API like Buddha host register. And in the case of SQL, you can use actually allocate ping memory using vendor API. So CUDA doesn't handle uh, aligned memory, but SQL does, it provides an API directly and you can just use this allocator with your vector and handle the ping memory. Or if you don't want to use the SQL, your code is pure open, pure offload, you can use those uh, LVM extensions to support, uh, to, to enable host memory alloc uh, allocation, ping memory allocation. By doing that, Oh, in addition, please also avoid allocating the allocating GPU memory on the fly because allocating the allocating is a bit blocking or at least even in certain vendor GPUs they're not blocking, you have options to do them on the fly. It's still a synchronization or a kind of you have to go through mutex, you go through the logs to put, keep the details, details of allocation, the allocation. So, Avoid those and prevent serialization. 
that pre uh, preventing concurrent execution. So you will maximize your concurrent offload to the GPU efficiency. So with Intel, uh, initially that we, we have to use the command list, uh, but it's not really low latency because we have to, in SQL, we enqueue those, or we recall those uh, operations into a command list and submit the commands. So the submission comes to the very end. There's an additional things that runtime needs to do to deal with the, the submission. So Intel provide a, an extension, probably not in the spec. I don't remember the details. Uh, they use a command list immediate. So it give us something more CUDA like put a stream like of uh, queues to use. So uh, actually it is my focus voting because I need to design the code uh, very similarly between Buddha and SQL. So we try to uh, actually with the, the, the immediate command list supporting at least the algorithm design, the logics behind can be very well aligned between different programming models. Uh, the OpenP side that it is actually for OpenP is implicit. So if you're using the latest, probably since last December or uh, maybe October, uh, the immediate command list has been using by default in OpenP provided by Intel. And in SQL, you just need to add a property requesting in order queue and you will leverage the immediate command list. So the SQL port becomes a lot easier for me and mostly because I don't need to manage those events, the SQL event object and put all the dependencies. So uh, another point is doing interoperability. As I've shown, uh, KimTVX has CPU port, uh, sorry, has OpenP target portion and CUDA, uh, sorry, SQL portion. The, these two are considered independent programming models, the, but for Kimsevang, we want them to share certain, as, uh, certain things, for example, memory. That is, if I allocate something on, uh, from the SQL side, I still want to operate open the kernels <coughs> on this data, vice versa. So the key is to share the, the share contacts and share devices. So basically what we do is leverage in the open P, let the open P create those contest devices and we query open P, we extra extract those objects and remake the SQL path. So by doing that, it's the same GPU context and we don't, uh, so sharing pointers between these two becomes uh, very easy, not an issue. So we could maximize, or let, as I mentioned, if I need to use SQL API to ping memory, even for a kernel I use in OpenMP. And OpenMP also benefit from, uh, we benefit from OpenMP way fewer kernels to written in vendor language, but we get the performance as we use SQL API to instruct the runtime say, oh, we want this particular behavior. So uh, another side topic is how to enable GPU memory query. In CUDA, there are standard ways uh, to query the GPU memory, see how how many, how much memory is still left on the GPU. So we can, can in, print out those information to users, let them know that how the code is behaving with the input file they, they gave. So in SQL, it's not is in, uh, turned on by default. And so far it is, is an uh, Intel extension. So it requires on the system service to report the GPU device memory size. So with SQL only code, you can initialize, when you initialize the uh, SQL runtime, you initialize the sysman feature as well. But on OpenMP, with OpenMP, the control is not explicit. 
uh, we will not post the the SQL. Sorry, the the you don't explicitly control the SQL uh, the level zero uh, uh, runtime. So you have to use this environment variable to to start the level zero runtime underneath the OpenMT to say turn on the sysman feature. Then you can query. Uh, using the SQL API to access the uh, GPU available memory to, yeah. So memory, GPU memory capacity is still a limiting factor and we all really wanted to uh, keep track of it and let you educate user what are going, what things are going on with their simulation. Okay, another point about the SQL queue I mentioned in QMC pack, we have multiple CPU threads doing open offload. We also have multiple C those multiple CPU threads doing SQL kernel launches. To maximize the concurrency, again, we need to use multiple SQL queues. However, uh, because SQL is a C++ language, so uh, you think about copy SQL queue object actually you will end up copy uh, you these two SQL uh, if you directly copy it's a shallow copy they still actually share the same level zero queue underneath so you don't really gain the efficient uh, the performance of multi-stream kind of behavior so it is re recommended when you need concurrent uh, SQL calls concurrent kernel execution those things just do multiple SQL queues and by constructing the queues fresh. Okay, so time to summarize what I did. So uh, QMC pack was supported for Intel GPUs on Aurora with OpenMP offload, uh, mostly valid, okay, with OpenMP offload with minimal SQL code and with the linear algebra libraries like um, MQL. Our experience actually porting side was relatively light. For example, OpenMP, we basically don't need to do anything except the interrupt. We need to do add a bit of code, but mostly the code has been validated through the other uh, GPUs, vendors, and other compilers runtime. And come back to Intel is mostly val validating the correctness and look at the performance and tell Intel uh, probably this could be improved. So this works pretty well. Uh, the SQL code, yes, we have to write the code for, for, for Intel GPUs. It's a bit of work, but by design, we kind of make, minimize it. Uh, MKL, yes, that's never easy. Uh, I would say all the blasts, slay path, they can go wrong. Yeah, unfortunately, unlike the CPU, we are quite confident of blast LaPack that the GPU blast LaPack is still very new. So uh, if you use them and try to work when the valid, validate their results and communicate with the Intel, our experience was quite smooth actually. Um, in QMC pack, we have the blast portion and LaPack portion. And we, the LayPack portion can be optionally run on the CPU. So we can isolate uh, just using the GPU LayPack first to uh, check whether there's an issue and later enable the, lay, uh, sorry, first enable just the blast, GPU blast to validate the software, then turn on the GPU LayPack in MKL. So just to consolidate this thing. So over the years, we've seen that Intel software stack compilers, runtimes, libraries improves significantly, and I'm very confident overall. So also for QMC pack, we did have this performance portable design, and it seems working very well. And uh, I think we it, it's good investment to do the design and ease our life later. And uh, and to get good performance. 